Hello everyone, this is Tay Kwan from Keene, New Hampshire. Hello everyone, I just want to share a case that I treated yesterday, and this is a gum graft case. And Rachel was referred to me due to high frenum attachment and gingival recession on two mandibular central incisors, tooth number 24, 25, and depending on where you are, this is tooth number 4, 1, and 3, 1. And you can clearly see that she has very minimal attached gingiva and thin gingiva and high frenum attachment. And she indicated that her recessions on tooth number 24 and 25 we're getting worse. However, we have a couple of challenges here. Normally, we will do free gingival graft or regular connective tissue graft. Free gingival graft meaning that we remove the outer surface of the epithelium and then place a gingival graft, including epithelium that was harvested from the palate. When you do that, although it will give us nice attached gingiva and keratinized tissue, and we can also address the frenum attachment. Aesthetically, usually it presents like a tire patch. And secondly, free gingival graft is really not the best procedure to gain or resolve gingival recessions. Then what is the alternative? We will do connective tissue grafting. Connective tissue grafting meaning that we either open up a flap and then take connective tissue from the inside layer of the palate and then put it over this root and then coronally advance the existing flap up to gain the root coverage. Aesthetically, it will really look nice because we can reduce the recession, but it has a problem of shallowing the vestibule because it's already, you can see, because of the high frenum attachment, the vestibule is already shallow. So by pulling the gum up, you're actually making the vestibule even shallower. And also, compared to free gingival graft, it will not give you as much as keratinized tissue. It may give you thickness of the tissue, but not necessarily keratinized tissue. So I was thinking about this case, and then I always like to think outside of the box. And I asked myself, is there any way that I can do the procedure with in, with combining the strength of both techniques. And this is how I solve. First, I took connective tissue graft from the palate. And on the recipient area, like I'm doing connective tissue grafting, I actually created a tunnel on tooth number 24 and 25, 4 1 and 3 1. And you can clearly see that I left epithelium on connective tissue graft on purpose. And now, instead of cutting the gum open, I'm going to introduce this connective tissue graft with epithelium into the tunnel, like so. So you can see I'm inserting this connective tissue graft from the right central incisor sulcus that I tunneled. And then by putting it in, I can slide it through, and then I can position within the tunnel, like so. And then you can clearly see that I stuff the connective tissue graft really nicely. That's why the recipient area looks thicker. But at the same time, you can clearly see that I left epithelium from the connective tissue graft exposed on this area. And I tug the lip, making sure there is no movement. And then I just finish the case by putting surgical dressing. So there's no suture on the recipient site, which also like patients likes a lot. By doing it, I can thicken the gingiva, like connective tissue graft. I can reduce the recession, like connective tissue graft, but I will also gain keratinized tissue, like free gingiva graft, because this exposed epithelium will be keratinized tissue. And lastly, I do not shallow the vestibule because I'm not coronally advancing the existing flap like we do with connective tissue graft. And this is how my patient Rachel left, and she was extremely happy. 
you may wonder, hey, I mean, does it really work in long term? You just you're just showing me the case of the day. Well, that's the whole purpose of this RG5. But I want to show you another case named Lori, who had a very similar situation, but I had eight months follow up. Lori presented to me uh, due to gingival recessions on mandibular incisors, lateral and central incisor from uh, 3 2 to 4 2 or 23 to 26. And like I explained to you, I harvested connective tissue with nice thick epithelium and I tunneled the recipient area and then insert this connective tissue graft with epithelium to the tunnel. Don't forget, I never cut this area open. It was all tunneled, minimally invasive way. And then I position the connective tissue graft with epithelium at the right level. And then I left epithelium portion on purpose exposed. And let's see what happened. This is eight months later. You can clearly see I totally converted the phenotype of the patient from thin biotype to thick biotype. And two, look at the gain in keratinized tissue. And three, I did not alter the vestibular depth. So she still has normal vestibule. And four, gingival recession has significantly reduced. So I hope you learned something from this case of the day. And sometimes thinking outside of the box will make you a, be more creative and innovative. And then you can come up with your own techniques. So I'll see you next time.